Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric and I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to show you the absolute easiest way to dry cure meats at home safely and produce incredibly delicious results. Dry cured meats are extremely expensive. They fall into this unique category of food and most often people reserve them for special occasions. But at the end of the day, dry cured meats is all about food preservation. The process has been around for millennium. And so if you don't necessarily care about the gourmet element of dry cured meats and you're more into food preservation, this video is for you as well. All right, before we begin, there is one thing that I want to talk about, and that's the use of curing salts. For this recipe, the use of curing salts is completely optional. You don't need them in order to produce a safe product. Now, I don't want to go into the why right now because that really deserves its own video. So if you want me to make a video on why the use of curing salts is completely optional when doing whole muscle dry curing, be sure to leave this video a thumbs up and a comment in the comment section below. So with that out of the way, let me show you the easiest possible way to make delicious capicola at home safely. The first thing we're going to do is get our hands on a capicola, also known as gabagool, uh, copa. It's the neck muscle of the pig. There is the loin portion of the capicola. And if we flip it on the other side, there's a series of muscle groups with intermuscular fat and connective tissue holding it all together. Absolutely delicious cut of meat, makes for great steaks or a great roast. So this is what the capicola looks like. If you butcher your own animal, this is where you can find the copa on the pig. This is half a hog. And from left to right, you're looking at the shoulder. You've got the loin, the belly in the middle, and then the ham or the hind leg on the right. And if we look at the shoulder primal, which is closest to the head, this top section here is known as the Boston butt or the pork shoulder. And this bottom section right here is known as the picnic ham. Now, normally right here, you'd find a hawk and a trotter, but I've already had that removed. So there's a couple different ways to butcher the pork shoulder, and it really just comes down to what you're looking for. In America, you'll sometimes find the pork shoulder butchered between rib number three and four. In Europe, sometimes at rib number five. But what we want to do is elongate that copa muscle. We want a nice big piece. So right here where my left hand is above the spine, this muscle is known as the capicola, and we're going to butcher this at rib number seven, which is going to give us a longer capicola, including some of the loin. It's going to be really great. So if you go to your butcher and you ask for the copa and he won't sell it to you, but he'll sell you a Boston butt, be sure to check out that link in the top right hand corner where I show you how to remove the copa muscle from the Boston butt so that you can make this delicious charcuterie at home. All right, so we have our copa muscle, and the very first thing that we're going to do is weigh it. To cure this copa muscle, we're going to be using a method known as the equilibrium method, and that simply means we're going to be adding a very precise amount of each spice in order for this to cure properly. Check out the link in the description box below, which will take you to a recipe, and all you've got to do is plug in the weight of your copa in grams in the recipe, and it'll automatically tell you how much of each spice to add. And that's what we have right here, a combination of salt, pepper, sugar, smoked paprika, some cayenne pepper. Check out the recipe for the full list of ingredients. We're gonna take about half of that spice mix and pour it over one side of our muscle, and then just begin to massage it in. After a minute or so, I'm gonna pour the rest of that spice mix on the other side of that copa muscle and continue to do the same. You're basically gonna massage the spices on your copa muscle for roughly a minute on each side. Once you've got the spices well massaged in, go ahead and take that copa muscle and place it in a vacuum seal bag. If you don't have a vacuum seal bag, you could use a Ziploc bag. That's not a problem either. Because we're using the equilibrium method to cure our meat, and the amount of spices that we added in the beginning is exactly the amount that we want our meat to absorb, we need to make sure to scoop up any spices that fell off of our meat during the massaging process and add those into the bag with our copa. This is going to ensure that it cures properly. Once we have 100% of our spices in there and our bag is now ready, I'm going to put a vacuum seal on it. If you're using a Ziploc bag, just try and remove as much air as you can. This is what mine looks like after a good vacuum seal, and I'm gonna place this in our home refrigerator. Every day or every other day, I'm gonna massage the muscle, and then I'm gonna flip it. This is gonna help it cure evenly. So here's the big question. How long do you allow your muscle to remain in your refrigerator before you know that it's fully cured? Well, the easy answer is that it just depends on how big it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a tape measure, 
and I'm going to measure the diameter of my copa. Now this is cylindrical, so it's roughly the same top to bottom as it is left to right, but we're looking at roughly three inches. So we're going to head over to a website to determine how long this needs to brine. I'm going to put a link for this website in the description box below so that you can bookmark it. But about midway down the page, you're going to find a tab that says brining time. And if you click that tab, it'll take you to a page that allows you to input your information. So in our case, we're going to put three inches. And as you can see, the inches is already checked. And then we have to determine whether it's flat like a brisket or cone shaped or tubular. Well, in our case, it's tubular. So it's telling me 5.6 days. Uh, is the minimum, but we want to add 20% to that to make sure that we properly cure it. We're going to use a plant-based wrap from the sausage maker called Dry Aging Steak Wraps. These wraps were designed to dry age beef in your home refrigerator, and through some experimenting, I found that they actually produce some pretty good charcuterie. So there's basically two elements to this wrap. You have the plant-based wrap itself, and you have the netting. Now, the plant-based wrap is unique in the sense that it controls the amount of moisture that's lost in a low humid environment. And that's exactly what your refrigerator is, a low humid environment. So we have one wrap ready to go. This is our Capicola. We just took it out of the fridge. It's been curing for seven days and now it's ready to start drying. And all we're gonna do is open the bag and first give it a nice little smell because it smells amazing. And we're gonna take this and just pop it into a tray. One of the questions we get a lot is whether or not it's necessary to rinse off your muscle after it's done curing. And the answer is completely up to you. You can rinse it off if you want, or you can just blot it dry like I'm gonna do right here. I've done both with different muscle projects and they all come out incredible. In this particular case, I've got a lot of really nice spices, chilies on this copa that I wanna keep during the drying cycle. It's gonna give me a nice sort of outer crust of peppers and things like that. So I don't wanna rinse that off. So we're just gonna blot this dry to get it prepared for our wrap and this looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and take that muscle and we're gonna set it right in the center of our plant-based wrap. These wraps work really good when the muscle is slightly damp. So I'm just gonna wet my hands and dampen the exterior surface of this muscle so that plant-based wrap can have something to stick to. And as you can see, it sticks to it beautifully. And all we're gonna do is just try to rub out as much air pockets that are remaining before we move on to the next fold. So our copa is wrapped and we have the netting around it. And that netting is really just gonna help that plant-based wrap adhere to that copa. And it's also gonna help keep its form. So otherwise it would tend to wanna lay flat. And we're just gonna go ahead and tie it off so that we can hang it. Once we have it tied off, we need to weigh our copa because this is gonna let us know when it's finished. In this particular case, it weighs 1,509 grams. And I personally like to shoot for a target of about 35% weight loss. So as my copa hangs out in the fridge, it's going to lose moisture. It's going to begin to lose weight. And when it gets to 981 grams, it is ready for me to eat. And at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and place it in the refrigerator. Now, depending on the kind of fridge you have, I happen to have one that has gratings. So I can hang my muscle. If you don't have one that has gratings, just be sure to place it on a rack that allows airflow on top and bottom. So now we wait. The refrigerator that you have your copa in is your regular home refrigerator, nothing special about it. So 34 to 38 Fahrenheit or one to three Celsius, you know, you're probably gonna have your butter, your eggs, your milk in there. And about once a week I weigh it and I don't even really keep track of the time, but this is what it looks like after 35% weight loss. It looks great. It's uh, firm to the touch and it looks like my wrap wants to come off pretty easy. If you're having trouble getting your wrap off, all you've got to do is soak it in some warm water for about 10 or 15 minutes and that wrap will basically get converted into a gelatin and just come off with no problem. So that's a little tip for you. I love the way it looks. Let's go ahead and cut it right down the middle and see what the center cut looks like before we slice it up and taste it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, that actually looks really good. And as I inspect the center cut, I am noticing a couple dark spots around the edge. We got one here, there's another one right above it. And really that's just a product of the low humid environment in your refrigerator, causing some of that outer meat to dry a little faster than the inside. But the inside is nice and firm, and I bet we won't even notice it after it's been sliced. So let's go ahead and take this, pop it on the slicer, and give it a taste. All right, here we go. Time for the taste test. One thing I do want to mention when it comes to dry cured meats, and it really doesn't matter what uh, muscle you're doing, you, you want to cut it as thin as you can. If you have a meat slicer, even better because you can get those nice, thin, consistent cuts. If not, you want to use a nice sharp knife, but the thinner, the better because you get that really great mouthfeel. Uh, if you tend to cut your dry cured muscles too thick, they could seem a little chewy. All right, so here we go. This is our capicola. All right. Wow. That's delicious. The salt level is perfect. The spice level is perfect. Just the overall flavor coming from this capicola is incredibly fresh. The seasonings really stand out. And the intermuscular fat from this capicola is, I don't know if you can see, but it's just slowly starting to melt on my fingers, creating this glistening effect. And when you eat it, mm, it literally just melts in your mouth along with the meat that turns into this buttery and slightly nutty deliciousness. Absolutely incredible. All right, now that you know how to make capicola, let me show you how to store it because I'm sure you're gonna have a whole bunch of it. So let me show you how to do that. Storing your capicola is very easy. The first thing you want to do is inspect for any mold. If there is mold on your capicola, just rub it down with some vinegar to kill the mold and then place it in a vacuum seal bag. Next, we're going to vacuum seal our bag. And depending on the type of vacuum sealer that you have, you're going to want to select the option that allows you to have an extra tight vacuum. So for us, we're just going to click the option tight. We're working with dry food and that's already selected. And so now we're just going to go ahead and place the bag in there and get it vacuumed. Vacuum sealing your charcuterie not only extends the life of your dry cured meat by allowing you to keep it in your refrigerator for a very long time, but it also has some really cool benefits. It will equalize any remaining moisture in your dry cured meat. And while it's in the fridge hanging out, waiting for you to eat it, it's going to slowly continue to age, which will further develop its flavor. Here's our cappy, all done, nice tight vacuum on it. We're gonna place this into the refrigerator until we're ready to make a very cool charcuterie platter. All right, everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you found this video entertaining or informative in any way, a thumbs up would be helpful. And if you're new to this channel and like food preservation techniques, DIY projects, we invite you to subscribe and click that notification bell so you can be notified of all future uploads. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.